All right, let's get started here. <clears throat> Hello, guys, and welcome to the first Pure Investments podcast. Um, in the future, this is going to be kind of an open format between all the analysts at Pure Investments who were available during the day. Um, you know, there's me, Smith, Bowen. Yo. Uh, Hello. Today, it's just me and Smith. Uh, a couple other people are busy. Bowen's on vacation. Uh, Brett may be joining us. His microphone, he can't find it since his recent move. I'm so. here, but I sound like I'm in, lost in a garbage can. Yeah, <laughs> he, he sounds like he's in a steel can. But otherwise, uh, that'll kind of be the format from here. We'll be taking questions at some point from the premium chat. Uh, we will be talking about upcoming news or recent news um, and just the overall market feel. Um, so that's that's the introduction. Uh, and let's yeah. kind of break into it. Well, I just I just had an article pop up on my screen saying that Tom Lee predicts Bitcoin to reach ninety one thousand by March twenty twenty. So at least we have some. Thousand. That's that's an interesting prediction. I like ninety one thousand. I I could uh, do with ninety one thousand. I think. <laughs> yeah, it makes a change considering the bear market at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I you know it. Looking at the market today, it it's quite the um. It's the word I want to use here. This is quite the dump. It kind of feels, to me at least, like that last little dump before the upcoming yeah. G20 meeting and everything. I'd um, have to agree. You know, it. we kind of went over this in my live stream on Wednesday, but there's just a lot of bullish reversal all of the uh, All of the previous old seasons, just before we transitioned into it, there was that last sell-off. Yeah, and it's just that they're trying to get that market sentiment into – you know, crash and burn, everything's hellfire and brimstone. And that's kind yeah. of what we're reaching now. Like you were saying the earlier. The whales just want that a little bit lower before they, yep. before they turn back again. Yeah, I mean, and you can you can kind of see the signals just looking around the market. I mean, you know, not that you guys can see my screen, but the people watching can. Uh, but there's just bullish, bullish divergence across basically every chart and time frame. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're dropping down, but every indicator is showing mass accumulation happening during this point. And that's yep. not just on Bitcoin. That is on ethereum um that is on various yeah. alts that i've been clicking around for them i mean you definitely can the here. technicals are there for the reversal yeah you can just see it everywhere basically that the i think the uh, the psychology is coming into it a lot as well as i'm seeing on twitter as i woke up this morning there's an increase in fearfulness which mm -hmm. is good good psychology for transitioning into a alt, uh, bull season yeah and you would think like people you know in general feel like when you know this is just the retail trading cycle, right? Is people mm -hmm. start to all fear at the same time. And just when we think it can't get any worse and this is, you know, th this is the end and crypto is going to crash and burn forever. That's when everything gets taken by the wayside and we go mm -hmm. flying up. As soon as, you know? as soon as the masses change their opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then, you know, we'll go through this whole cycle again. We will probably run to some kind of new high and then, you know, we'll crash and burn from there after enough new people get burned in. And then the whole cycle starts up again. And this just keeps going on. You know, I, I've I've said it a few times, but people constantly talk about the the crypto bubble popping similar to, you know, your um, your, uh, you know, like dot com boom and that bubble popping. But in reality, crypto's bubbles popped like five times now <laughs> and it and it yeah. keeps recovering. And to me, that just shows that it's kind of here to stay you know it, it, even during all of the fud cycle that we've had the past three months you can still see the silver linings there with banks getting involved and governments getting involved you know it, this isn't just going to disappear overnight by some miracle it, it mm -hmm. you're just starting to now see actual adoption from outside sources that we didn't have going into this last year you know i think a Absolutely. lot of people forget that 2017 was really the first real year of a crypto boom you yep. know this time last year we were at what 15 billion market cap and mm -hmm. now we're yeah. even even we now at, like one thousand nine hundred dollars right i think it was the low yeah Maybe even lower than that uh no the low at the start of the year you mean no we went lower than that i think i believe let's see looking at the chart here i want to say we hit like yeah we hit like 750 on january Jesus. 12th Seven hundred and fifty dollars for Bitcoin. I remember exactly. the dip to nineteen hundred, and everyone was kind of panicking. And yeah. this was just before we went into that big alt season. Yep, exactly. And you know, you can see it just looking at everything. You know, there's 
there was the huge sell-off before Bitcoin ran up to like, I think it was like, yeah, I think 1300. And then we had that almost month long bear period. And that was right before the first alt season started where we went from like 1300 down to 900 and then everything just started exploding. And, and at that point, by the way, cause I, I continually hear people talk about how, you know, if, if Bitcoin goes up or down, the alts are going to all drop, but the the big alt season we had last march everything kind of ran together you know bitcoin yeah ran, what happens Ethereum is the, the synergy the synergy between altcoins and bitcoins actually changes every couple of months you might not notice it it might not be as noticeable as other times but just before an alt season just going into it, the synergy will change yeah exactly you know the the the, the synergy we've been seeing where it you know everything's dumping together is is going to go up together too to a degree yeah you know, there will be a point where, where more than likely Bitcoin will break a certain point and it'll cause alts, alts to stagnate or drop a little bit for sure. Like that will happen where Bitcoin yeah. just goes parabolic again, more than likely. And then that causes, you know, everything else to crash with it. Yeah. When um, Bitcoin gets momentum. Mm -hmm. Which is what we saw from, you know, November until like that mid-December point when we hit that 20K mark on Bitcoin was when the alt season started. You know what I mean? And we had that that month long alt season where Bitcoin kind of just moseyed around and did not much of anything and just kind of hung around that, you know, that 19,000 to like 15,000 range. Um, and, and that was what caused the alt season. And that'll likely be what happens again. We'll have some amount of run up. It, again, this is all assuming that we don't go into a long bear period, which is still possible. I just don't anticipate mm -hmm. it. But if we do turn around here bounce out of this falling wedge that you can see i mean if you're listening to this just audio you can't see it but there's a falling wedge on bitcoin right now on the daily and the four hour if we do bounce out of this and start the bull run back up what you'll likely see is alts follow for the first week or two and recover a lot of mm -hmm. the losses they've had and then bitcoin go nuts and then alts kind of drop down a little bit again and then the real alt season come in shortly thereafter more than likely that's at least been the, the trend for the last two years or so since these alts have really started to come into the focus, you know, because prior to what early 2016, late 2015 alts really weren't a thing just yet. You know, you basically had Ethereum, mm -hmm. Bitcoin, Litecoin, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, so, so that's kind of what we're looking at here. And this does just feel like a big sell off before the g20 yeah. and like you pointed out earlier a lot of the alts that had the big runs are back to their original points now yeah and i mean i can show that here a little bit it would take a lot of fud to take any of these coins a lot lower than they are like icx is ridiculously low right now there's big support under where it is the only way it's going to drastically drop from here is if we do transition into that bear market yeah exactly you know we're getting to that point i mean the ICX chart is a little bit harder to show, but I mean, just an example, not a coin that I'm a huge fan of, but TRX, you can kind of see this support here, right? This was the the first mini run up at the start of December, like mid December when Bitcoin hit 20K, we had this little mini run up, right? And now we're resting right on that support here. And you can see the same thing across the market. Here's Poe, same concept, first mini run up, hit around 300 sats, and now we're back down to that 300 sats, you know what I mean? So we're not completely back to those levels exactly, but we're we're back to the height of the previous alt run, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. And I can kind of show that probably if I tab out here. I can actually kind of show you what I mean here. So if I go to coin market cap and we go into the market cap chart here. So if we go down here to the market dominance chart, which for some reason isn't loading, there we go. All right, so what you can see here, if we shrink this down to the start of 2016, as soon as my computer decides to <laughs> work with me here, um, if we shrink this down, come on, here we go. All right, so once this loads, you'll see. So basically at the height of the first, like basically the first alt run, right? It was back in like July of 2016. And what we mm -hmm. hit was around seven, 8% for alt highs. Right. And then when we dipped back down after the March run from last year, we dipped back down right around to those same marks and made this nice support here. And then we had our big bull run, which went up to, you know, what, 15% or so. 
of alt dominance and we crashed back down but what we crashed back down to was the nine percent from the march bull run and then once again here we had this massive run up and if you can see we're right back down to around 17 percent right now as of today actually i think it's a little bit lower this just isn't slided over all the way but it, we're almost back to the high of alt dominance from that july bull run that that big move up yeah and due to um Sorry, I'll let you speak. No, no, I was just going to say, and that's kind of a pattern that you can see just looking at the dominance chart. And you can notice I have, you know, everything else kind of hidden here. This is just the the smaller altcoins, not so much Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin and all of those. Yeah. But it's just a generalized pattern that you see where we keep making these new highs. Eventually, and I wouldn't be shocked, this probably happens at some point this year, you'll see more than likely alts eclipse Bitcoin and dominance at some point. Yeah. Um, it, it just, you can see this ever ending ebb and flow of, you know, up slightly down, up more slightly back down. And we keep tapping the supports that you don't really see mm -hmm. on a normal chart. Cause you're not looking at, you know, you're not looking at a chart. Like there's no like candlestick chart for altcoin dominance. You know what I mean? But you can look at the percentages here and actually get a good understanding that we are near that top from the previous alt run before this recent one in December. And it stands to reason that we will break up out of this and probably make a new high at some point. So the high from this past one was 25% dominance. You know, we'll yeah. probably see a run to 30, 40% dominance at some point with alts. I think the uh, difference in the alt season that we're anticipating and the alt season that we previously had uh, will be the volume difference. Uh, the last uh, the last alt seasons we had, we had a lot of shit coins, a lot of random coins that pumped a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be a lot different in the old season that we're expecting. I think strong fundamental coins will lead as opposed to just random coins that people have enough money to pump. Oh, for sure. I mean, so I think fundamentals are definitely going to take uh, a bigger role in the next old season as opposed to the last ones. Because really, fundamentals weren't even really a big thing in the last old season. Like, it, a no, coin I could mean, run up Doge. for no reason at all. You saw Doge, which is a complete meme. Yeah. Run like EMC2. From... Yeah, run from, you know, I think at its low, it was at like 50 million 15 market cap or something, it. and it ran yeah. up to, you know, almost a billion dollars. And there's no mm. rhyme or reason for that. And that's the type of thing that, you know, I, I will get into a little bit when we discuss, you know, regulation in a little bit, because I think mm. that's the type of thing, and we could even break into that now if you wanted, but that's the type of thing that I think we're going to start seeing, you know, people... Yeah. constantly talk about overall market regulation and i just don't see that as a as a thing that's coming anytime soon but we do see these little hints of like primarily the u.s mm -hmm. really wanting to fight the random pump and dumps of like what you said they're basically shit coins that have no and it's relevance. mostly just to protect their name as a government as opposed to actually helping the crypto market which yeah. sucks but but the, in the end the, the end result will likely be some somewhat the same you know it, yeah the idea is to just help help stop this concept of you know things like a meme coin going to a billion dollar net worth when yeah. there's oh, no wow. reason. Oh wow, we're gonna hard fall. We're gonna bring you something amazing. And yeah, you know, Bitcoin Cash is a good example of that, where <laughs> they basically did nothing relevant and they kind of just made it seem like they were mm. this great differentiator from Bitcoin, when in reality, all they were was Bitcoin with Sedgwick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's really all it was. Um, and, and now that Bitcoin has Sedgwood activated, th there's not even really a purpose for Bitcoin cash anymore. Bitcoin right now is cheaper for transactions. It's faster. Why would you use it? You know, that whole entire FUD cycle, which actually kind of started off the entire bear market we're in was Bitcoin cash. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and the, obviously the stuff that's going on with Coinbase that's currently being investigated, which is, did they have insider trading with it or not? Um, but all of that really did kind of kick kick this whole bear market off because that was really at the height you know that was like a day or two after we hit twenty thousand was when that all went down and we mm -hmm. had that huge huge wick down to i want to say it was like 12 or thirteen thousand within that day yeah it's 10 you know we had this like massive crash like we were in like a mild bear period and then that hit and bitcoin cash went crazy and we crashed back down pretty hard um so you know, I, I, I think we'll start, as you said, to see more fundamentally strong coins, coins that have an actual use case growing, Yeah. which is better for the market. You know, it, it's rough when you're trying to, you know, hunt, 
hunt down fundamentals on coins and then you see something like doge that just ran ten thousand percent and doesn't do anything yeah definitely you know sorry just taking a drink there um you know and i think i think that'll be the the primary focus too of the the g20 summit you know uh it seems like there's a lot of rumor going around on twitter and social media and stuff that the the general g20 um what's the word i'm looking for here uh summit yeah well no 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 the uh sentiment <laughs> the general g20 sentiment among all the governments is going to be mostly bullish you know mostly leaving everything kind of the way it is for now and letting it self regulate that's at least the rumor that's going around i believe uh, the official uh, response to what the G20 summit is going to include was delegates will consider a common response that would mitigate the risks without discouraging innovation, which to me sounds bullish. And if that does uh, prevail in the summit, that would be great. Yeah, and we saw that already a little bit with the um with the the Senate hearing that we had. What was that back in early February with the U.S. Yeah, you know where mm -hmm. their overall sentiment then was also you know we. We want to stop scams. We want to prevent these pump and dump groups from existing because mm -hmm. they are causing harm to marketplaces and, you know, yep. just their constituents. But at the same time, they don't want to stem innovation because they do see the potential for blockchain technology as a whole to really change the world. And that's that's the yep. important part to realize is that, you know, the governments overall see the see the value in the technology as a whole yeah because because blockchain top technology is not coming in to compete with other sectors it's coming in to join them all together and ultimately yeah. help them all oh i mean the the concept of you know logistics with blockchain technology is so much greater than what we currently have for logistics you know yeah. the, the the potential that's there is insane um, I was going to say, there's some, there's some logistician somewhere creaming himself over the thought of blockchaining all of his job. Like. Yeah, exactly. And that's, it just that's... It improves the overall efficiency for all sectors, really. I don't think there's one sector that can't uh, have blockchain implemented no, I mean, into their systems. Whether, whether, it, whether we're talking, you know, logistics like shipping or whether we're talking, you know, hospitals for patient documents Just general and stuff. data transfer a any form of data and data is the the new thing like that's everything is data the world runs on data and what blockchain mm. does is make that data more secure more accessible and more redundant and that's important because just storing that data in a you know a sql database somewhere isn't going to be <laughs> as good as storing it in you know a distributed ledger that basically can't mm -hmm. be faked you know to inject false indications into a, a ledger like this is basically impossible the effort it would take would be you know it, half the world all participating in it at once you know what yeah. i mean so so i think i think overall we will see that information coming out of g20 that you know we we don't want to we want to make sure that we're not getting people scammed but we also don't want to put our foot down to the point where we actually cause the market to have a serious problem you know, yeah. they, they we, do, we do need this. we need regulation or some some regulation to progress forward. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you, you can't just have these these pump and dump groups and, you know, these random coins that just pop up and run an ICO, raise 20 million dollars and disappear overnight. You, it can't keep yeah. happening like that. You know what I mean? But that said, people act like there's not scams like this on the traditional markets. And mm, I, I, yeah. I think that's a huge flaw in thinking. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that happens from a lot of people that do trade cryptos don't have a traditional market background, mm -hmm. you know, and they they just see these scams and just assume that doesn't happen due to the regular market uh, regulation. But that's not true. You know, uh, anyone who's ever traded OTC stocks can tell you that there are some brutal, brutal scams out there. Mm, definitely. And some of them are on regular, you know, some of them are on the NASDAQ and the NYSE too. I mean... You know, I remember there's a stock that I traded back in the beginning of last year, in the beginning of 2017, called Dries. In March of uh, 2016, it ran from like four dollars to I think like three hundred dollars before crashing all the way down. And they've done like 15 reverse stock splits now. If you actually look at their chart, their original valuation, because of all their reverse stock splits, is something like two billion dollars a share, because that's how much money they've scanned people out of. So. The idea that scams don't exist in traditional markets does also need to stop, 
Mm -hmm, definitely. You know, and just just like how people say, oh, wow, so, you know, Bitcoin's going to be used for all this fraudulent activity. But in actuality, yeah. there's probably going to be less fraudulent activity compared to fiat money. Well, yeah, think about it, right? So, like, there was a, uh, it wasn't a Senate hearing. I believe it was a House of Representatives hearing that that happened recently. And there's one guy who was kind of been made into a meme out of that hearing. But basically, you know, he kept bringing up, like, terrorism financing and such. But it, terrorism financing is maybe like 2% crypto. W what do you mm -hmm. think terrorists were doing back during 9-11? I, I said it the day that that happened. 9-11 <laughs> was 2001. When did Bitcoin get created? You know what I mean? Yep. So this idea that like this is making it easier to fund terrorism is just stupid. It's stupid. Yep. If anything, it makes it easier to trace money that's being used to fund terrorism. You know, it, if I hand you $100 for you know an eight ball or something there's no way for you to there's no way for the government to know that that happened unless there's somebody watching me do it because it's cash mm -hmm. it's a piece of paper i hand to you there's no way to track that transaction if i do it with bitcoin in theory there's a way to track that you know what i mean and, and i think that's something that eventually you'll see go away that's that seems to very much be like all the older senators and stuff like that are the ones who kind of bring that up and mm -hmm. i'm sure there's a i'm sure there's you know, there's always something behind what they're saying. You know, they are obviously being paid by agenda. big banks. Yep. Yeah, they're obviously being paid by banks and stuff for their votes. And at the end of the day, this is a threat to banks, right? Like, it, yep. if if crypto blows up as much as we really think it can, and when we say blows up, I mean crypto is still a speck mm -hmm. on on an overall marketplace in the world. You know, so if it ever did blow up to the point that we think it could the 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 banks would be severely threatened you know which is why you see a lot of things like oh goldman sachs is calling for bitcoin to drop down to two thousand dollars like yeah of course goldman sachs is calling for that because they want it to go away <laughs> it's a threat to their money or they want to just load up on it cheap and ride the waves back up which is the other possibility but either way of course they saw with jp morgan it. yeah exactly you saw that exactly with jp morgan and then he came out and said, oh, it was a mistake to, uh, <laughs> to to ever call Bitcoin a joke or whatever he called it. I forget the exact term he used. Meanwhile, he was accumulating and he knew full well he was accumulating. Yeah, exactly. But that's, <clears throat> you know, that's again, going back to the, the regulation thing is regulations have never stopped anyone from doing what they want. Regulations just stop people without a ton of money from doing what they want. The, mm. the people who run the country still consistently commit fraud on regular markets. And nothing ever happens. They get a slap on the wrist. You know, I mean, look at the banking crisis from the real estate crisis from 2007. It, it, nothing happened. They got bailed out. They got billions of dollars because they messed up and they scammed people out of money. So what they do, they got billions of dollars to help them save the country. So, you know, it, regulation doesn't necessarily mean a stop to a bull market. That's not what that means. Because at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want and they know that they can get away with it. So I also think that the idea that like if crypto is ever regulated, it's going to crash and burn is silly too. Mm -hmm. You know, traditional markets are worth what, $90 trillion? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of a, a stupid concept to think that if we ever did get regulated, which I don't think we will, I don't think it's possible to regulate this in the same way that regular yeah you can do it to some extent but overall regulation to the extent that we see in traditional stock markets is probably not going to happen yeah be just because traditional stock markets are centralized right like yeah. whether you're trading on td or merrill lynch or whatever platform you're using you're trading on a centralized marketplace and that's yeah. never going to be to to for uh to enforce strict regulations on cryptocurrency <laughs> defeats the objective completely yeah, that defeats the entire purpose of it, right? Like to, to yeah. enforce those regulations on it would be to kill it anyway, which you can't do. You know, I definitely if... don't think we're going to go down without a fight. I think there'll be some big protests, even yeah. from uh, officials, let alone just you know normal citizens. You know, if if we do go down and the governments want to enforce strict regulations, then you know we're not going to go down easy. There's going to be a lot of protests. And it may not be protest of marching on Washington type of protest, but yeah. you'll see it in the marketplace because. The, the yep. one thing with, with crypto that I think people forget is it started underground. It didn't start yeah. like it is now, and it can go underground again. It doesn't need to – you know what I mean? Like if they tried to really regulate it heavily, it's very easily to kind of flip, 
flip that switch and go underground. Mm -hmm. it, there, there's really no way to centralize the marketplace and you would need to centralize the marketplace in order to regulate it to the way of traditional markets. So that I don't see as like an actual possibility at any point. I think mm -hmm. you're going to see stuff like we were talking about earlier where they're going to try to regulate ICOs, which is good, I think. Yep. I mean, I don't know about your I opinion. I agree. But, I agree. Yeah. Like to me, I think regulating scam ICOs so that we don't constantly have these things like BitConnect scammed billions of dollars out of people's pockets is a better thing overall because it creates less opportunities for FUD. You know? Um, and I think that's important to realize. I think people see it as like, oh, well, all those cheap ICOs that moon are no longer going to be there. Where's my Lambo? But in general, <laughs> it's it's better for an overall, you know, just a sustained growth marketplace, which is where we want to be. You know, we, we don't, I, at least I don't want to be in this, constant you know up ten thousand percent down down ninety percent up ten thousand percent down ninety percent because it's 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 hard to invest you know what i mean yeah you know on a standard marketplace you can literally invest your money in and just watch it grow over time and there might be small 15 percent corrections here or there but you don't have to ever worry about 90 percent of your money disappearing mm. I think now might be a good time to transition into some stream questions. Okay. Sure. Stream questions or premium questions? I mean, either. Okay. Let's see. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's look at the premium questions that have been asked. How have these last few days affected your outlook on when we might see an end to this bear market? Do you want to take that one, Smith, or do you want me to? Uh, I can touch on it a little bit. All right. You go first, and then I'll throw in my two cents. The last few days, um, I think I think we're playing out a perfect market cycle, really. A lot of people don't want to say that. You know, we're going down. Oh, my God, they want to panic. They want all the excuses to just kind of say, oh, oh my God, like we're going down. Nothing's going to happen, which is, st which is stupid. Like, I think the market cycle has played out perfectly. You can actually uh, kind of compare this chart to 2015, and it, it looks exactly the same, obviously, with different volume. Um, but I think this this downfall was necessary. Um, I don't think it's unwarranted. Yeah, and, and the, I mean, falling, the falling wedge that we're in at the moment, again, over the past few days, that makes me think we're bullish. Um, the fib, I reckon the fib, fib will hold or we will wick underneath it. But I don't think we're going to go any lower than sort of 5,500, 6,000. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even see us going under that 6,000 dip, truthfully, because that would, A, that would be falling out of this wedge. The only people that are going to benefit from that wick will be people who have set up buy orders already. There's going to be a quick, it's going to be a quick transition. Oh, yeah, whether whether that wick happens or not, it'll be like the 6,000 tank, right? Where, like, we dropped, like, $2,000 in the span of four hours, and we're back up over that mark with four, within four hours after that. And that'll you know? just be the wells. Yeah, and that's all that is. Last you know, I mean, just looking back on that dip, you can see all the massive green volume that came in after that dip down. Yeah. And I think people often forget, too, that, you know, yes, we're going down and there's a lot of sells, but there's people buying with every one of those sells. You yeah. know, th this crypto, at least at this moment, is not akin to traditional markets where everyone's trading on margin and a lot of those trades aren't real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, every every buy is a sell and every sell is a buy there is no in between where there's a way to fake buys and sells like you can with margin and there is margin trading on bitcoin but mm -hmm. a lot of it you're not really you're you're trading like a fake version of it basically like you're not actually trading yeah. bitcoins a lot of the times you're trading and contracts yeah exactly you're trading contracts on bitcoin you're not actually trading bitcoin you know the only trading that goes on in our marketplace with any crypto is is hand-to-hand -hand trading of here, I'll give you this Bitcoin for this price. And you say, okay, I'll buy it. You know, so where, whereas in traditional markets, a lot of times you can see, you know, people heavily shorting a market and that causing a complete tank and it not actually being people selling off of their long-term positions or anything. Here, you don't see that. There are people buying and there are people selling. And there's a really good bet that the people selling right now are the people that are retail investors and they're selling into all these people who are buying who are the whales and your 
you know, your people like you were talking about, like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, those are the people who are buying right now. Those are not the people who are selling. They're they're causing the flash dips to scare people into selling, but they're not the people that are just constantly selling off right now. You know what I mean? That's that's stop losses that are being hit and such. But I, I think that's an important thing to remember is that even when we're going down and even when we're going up, there's always people buying and selling. There's no way to trade hands and drop a price or raise a price without that transaction taking place. But yeah, I mean, overall, I kind of agree with Smith. I, I think that we've got to be nearing the bottom here. I don't think that the last few days have made me change that. Yeah, we've gone lower than I thought we would off of this dip. You know, I mean, I, I figured the dip was coming when we were up at like 11.7 a few weeks ago or a week ago, I guess. Um, I, I really didn't think we'd come this far down. I figured maybe like 8.5, somewhere in that range. Um, but I mean, it also made sense to test the, the log down trend, right? Yeah. Or the log well, up I mean, trend, rather. When Ethereum was at its highs of 14,000, I, I was saying I, I have full confidence it's going back to 600, 500. So it doesn't surprise me that we're here where we are. No, I mean, we had to come down eventually, right? It, <laughs> you know, and I, and I think people keep worrying about ethereum too which i also think is kind of silly you know i mean we've mm -hmm. obviously in premium consistently talked about where we think ethereum's going and the general sentiment is up um yeah but you know i mean you could see ethereum from last year's bull run here after that big run up it, it had a retrace and it's hard to tell that this had a retrace but it did have a pretty bad bear retrace before going up more so i'm not terribly worried in that regard you know it, this is a bump basically in the greater scheme of everything you know i i think people often forget that right now we are just simply sitting on the price that we were in november you know um one other thing is that we were in a channel that we went parabolic out of and i really do just think that this is just a correction to get back into that channel basically you know, we had this really nice ascending channel that we were in for a long time. And when we broke over that like 8,300 mark and ran to 20,000, we went parabolic out of that channel. And all this has been so far, at least, is just falling back into that channel and reestablishing it. Um, so so to this point, I'm still overall bullish. And I, I think sometimes people misunderstand like that. When I say I'm bullish, I mean like I'm bullish for a turnaround right this second. But that's not what I mean. I mean, overall marketplace next couple months i i don't have any worries if that makes sense yeah um what other questions did we have uh when a crypto is wedging what are some ways indicators or gut feelings to predict whether it will break out or break down um i mean that generally just comes down to how the wedge is being drawn up you know a, a falling wedge is generally considered bullish a rising wedge is generally considered bearish so you know, prior to this falling wedge, we were actually in a rising wedge on Bitcoin from around yeah. 7,000 up to around 12,000, right? I want to say. Um, and that broke down. So that's that's more so how it works. I mean, you can break wedges the opposite direction. They don't always go the way that you plan them to. Which Bitcoin is somewhat notoriously famous for. Yeah. You know, oh, didn't mean to draw that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's more you're looking for indications all around, right? So you're looking at a bunch of indicators in general, trying to identify that we're at or near a bottom, right? So, so you identify the immediate pattern, which is rising wedge, falling wedge. And then you take a look at the indicators, just simple indica indicators like, you know, stock RSI moving averages. And then you take yeah. a look at the fundamentals. Is any upcoming catalysts yeah. to drive the price out of it? Exactly. So it's just a combination of all the things that we've touched on in premium that I'm sure a lot of the members are familiar with now. Yeah, if and that's not, what most technical yeah. analysis is. You're, you're combining stuff. If you're just relying on just MACD or just yeah. Stoke RSI or just EMAs, or you're going to have problems, right? You need to find confirmations all over the place, you know. Just for example, right now, we're at the bottom of this falling wedge on Bitcoin. And if you look at the four-hour chart, RSI is 30 Yep. So it's it's in the oversold territory now. Stoke RSI is it was at zero and had like a tiny little baby bounce, you know. So you're seeing all these indications that show that this should, in theory, at least be the bottom. And it also just so happens to be the bottom of the wedge. And those are the type of things you're looking to line up. 
Yeah, I think the three the three steps to identifying the question this guy asked would be first, what pattern is it? Second, what indicators align with it? Third, what fundamentals are there? Yeah, I mean fundamentals play a big part, and I think some people get too into technicals. Uh, technicals mm -hmm. matter a lot, but technicals and fundamentals together are always going to be a much stronger combination. Yep. Um, let's see. I think those were the only questions that were asked, unfortunately. Um, if anybody has some, feel free to throw them out in Discord or in the the Twitch chat, and we are all ears. Um, otherwise, I don't know. Do we have anything else, Brett, that you wanted to discuss during this? From your trash can? Hello, it is me from the trash can. <laughs> Everyone just um... wants Lambos. Right, yeah, when when, when Lambo, Lambo question question one when Lambo when Moon, um. <laughs> yeah I'm not sure if we actually have anything else. Uh, I want to say I want to say something. The, a lot of the people, a lot of the uh, traders and investors that we have in pre, uh, premium, they need to definitely focus more on not finding that absolute bottom and focus more on long term because they're often trying to scoop the absolute bottom. Can uh can that have an adverse effect when you're trying to overtrade? You're looking too deep into things. You know, uh, a lot of people speculate that Ethereum is going to be X amount by the end of the year, like three thousand plus dollars. If that's the case, then why are you bothered about buying uh even the four forty or five forty? You know, you just you should average down, not bother too much about finding the absolute bottom if your trading abilities aren't like a hundred percent there yet. Oh, for sure, and I I think that is something people focus on too much I, I would completely agree with that you know you you keep hearing people say oh you know bitcoin's going back to four thousand right and that was happening when we were hitting that six thousand mark mm -hmm. and it, even if you buy there at six thousand even if you think it's going to four thousand that's why you scale into a position you yep. know you don't buy your whole that's thing that's just but, risk management that everyone yeah, should practice but if it bounces at six thousand as opposed to going to four thousand like everyone's screaming about then at least you have a taste of that really nice dip buy so yep. that when we ran back up to 12,000, you're not sitting there going, damn, I really should have bought at six. And, you know, this is something that I harp on all the time inside premium. So I'm going to bring it up here too, because I'm sure there's people who are watching that aren't just in premium. But a, a big thing that a lot of people discuss in general is just this, this idea of like, how do I want to word it? Um, I'm losing my train of thought here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but this idea that like you, you have to buy the exact bottom and if you don't, you're losing out on money. But, you know, kind of like you were saying, it's just you, you have to take a risk. You can't just assume that everything's going to go lower, right? You yep. always are sitting there when Bitcoin's at 20,000 going, damn, I don't want to buy now. I really want to wait for a dip. But then Bitcoin hits 6,000 and you're sitting there going, hmm, 4,000 could come. I'll wait. You know, the, the fact is, if that's your mentality, you're not going to buy at 4,000 either because we're going to hit yep. 4,000 and then you're going to go, mm, 2,000 can come. I'll wait. On the on the surface, when you come into crypto, uh, you, you kind of think like the big the bigger position I have, the more money I'm going to make. But it's actually proven that uh, smaller trades over a long period of time is more profitable than big trades. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you should diversify no matter what your portfolio size, even if you only have $1,000. $500 you should diversify don't put your eggs in one basket regardless of your portfolio size yeah you shouldn't all in all all in is just asking for trouble you know yeah you're, <laughs> you're gambling like I mean uh, trading is gambling somewhat but all in is taking it to a different level you might as well just go play roulette to be honest yeah you know it, at that point just put <laughs> put a thousand dollars on double zero and see what happens but sir I want a Lambo <laughs> <laughs> you know so, uh, it... sorry go on no, I was just going to say, somebody in chat said, can you guys disagree more? We usually do. This is surprising that we agree on most of these points. <laughs> right, that's what I just told them. <laughs> yeah, Smith and I usually but, uh, are always on the same page. Someone in the Twitch chat also asked about your opinions on Tron. Oh, my opinions on Tron. Do you want to take this one, Smith, or do you want me to? <laughs> be, be brutally honest. Um... <laughs> For, from a fundamental standpoint I, I i don't know that tron is a real thing um i i think that 
Justin Sun has often been a little scammy in his ways. Um, you know, for a similar reason why I always had a problem with Bitcoin Cash because of Roger Ver. It's the same reason that I avoid Tron. And something I'd like to point out here is that just because you see gain potential on a coin that you have questions about fundamentally doesn't mean that you should trade it, right? There are plenty of opportunities to make gains in a market and you shouldn't just trade something based on hype. Yeah. You know, hype, um, hype can be profitable, but yeah. But my point basically being like, <clears throat> there, there's other ways to make money, right? You shouldn't, you shouldn't gamble on something like, for example, BitConnect, if we're going to talk about scams, right? BitConnect was a huge scam. It was pretty apparent that it was a pyramid scam. I mean, they literally had that in their advertising brochures was a pyramid, um, you know, but people still bought it up like crazy because of the hype and ignored the fundamental questions when in reality you could have just made money somewhere else. Right. Like, and a lot of people lost money. Most of them didn't make money on BitConnect, you know, and mm -hmm. that's just one extreme example, obviously. But in general, if you have a lot of serious questions, you know, there's been a lot of questions since the uh, since the John Oliver bit on EOS as well. And if you have a lot of fundamental questions on a coin, don't feel forced to trade it just off of FOMO that it's going to run another 10,000% and you're going to miss out. There's going to be other gains opportunities like that in other cryptos that don't have those severe questions in place. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> One thing I'd like to say, uh, I pretty much touched on it a minute ago. Uh, everyone should have a portion of their portfolio that is long term and by long term i don't mean six months i mean multiple years because that is really where the big bucks can happen is if you commit to a strong fundamental coin to commit and you commit to holding it for multiple years yeah absolutely i mean you, your portfolio should always be split to some degree on long term as you said where you're talking years medium term where you're talking months and short term stuff where you're talking those you know couple yeah. day trades yeah and you should have a trading stack and an investing stack in exactly each. yeah there, there should be some kind of split you don't want to just be all long terms because you're going to find yourself sitting around a lot in market yeah. states like this where I you're have, just sitting there scratching your head i have around 20 25 percent of my portfolio long term and about 10 percent of that is uh coins that i plan to hold for at least three years yeah and that's probably about right i have a lot more medium term stuff right now just because i've been buying on this way down so yep. you know i have a lot of stuff that i'm planning on getting out of once the next alt season comes which should be this year you know Oops, sorry yeah. um which should be this year and then i have some other coins like you said where i'm kind of just planning on holding until i see real growth and product development from them which will likely be a year two years three years potentially one of the uh, long-term investments that I quite like is uh, AI technology. AI technology? I don't, that's the first time I've heard you mention that one. Or you mean yeah. just in general AI, like AI technology for coins, like uh, like Matrix, right, is an AI? Yeah, like Matrix Network. Yeah, I mean, there's to me, long-terms are purely fundamental. There's no technical analysis done on them at all. Mm -hmm. It's purely fundamentals, and you want to look, at least from a crypto standpoint to me, for things that have real-world application. You know, things that could really benefit heavily from crypto in general. You know, like we said before, like logistics, um, you know, things like publishing and uh, IP, things like AI, like you were saying. These things that we have in our every day-to-day -day lives and don't even realize possibly how beneficial crypto could be to mm -hmm. them. Yep. Um, but I think, do we have anything else or is that about it? We're going to wrap it up here. Brett, mm -hmm. anything else, Smith? I, I mean, I think that about does it. Unless Smith's got something else he'd like to uh, go over. No, unless we have a few more questions that come in. I think we've covered quite a bit. No, I think, yeah, I think we're good. It. Yeah, we'll call it for this week and we will be back next week for another episode. Um, hopefully next week we'll have some more questions. Uh, we kind of threw up the question box a little bit late this week. Um, but you know, this is the, this is the first ceremonial, uh, first podcast. So hopefully, hopefully these things will pick up and we'll have more ideas along the way, but, yeah, um, absolutely. you know, that's about it guys. So we're going to send you off here and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining Bye. us.